It was, um, I just had to move my phone because the signal is a bit rubbish. Can you hear me okay? I've moved the microphone off of the table because a Okay, it's a connection. I'm really sorry. It's popping in and out. Okay, can hear me. Okay, my I put my microphone down there on the little stand. So okay, so today I'm making um, hair conditioner. So it's here in my jug, and it's very liquidy when I pour it into the bottles, but it slowly thickens as it goes sort of hear any interference when my phone is near let me know so i can carry on okay okay, okay. so the connection's just really naff today see how that goes the last time i think the video the picture went really shoddy because i moved my phone i'm going to move it over just gonna move it underneath and see what happens. Okay, right. So I'm making hair conditioner. <laughs> so I'm just weighing the, these out into the um, bottles. I'll be back with you in a second. Let me just concentrate on what I'm doing here. Just have to get these bang on weight. Okay. okay, so I wasn't going to do a live this week because I'm not really doing much other than, what do you mean no? Oh, no interference. Okay, I put it back down where it was before, so I hope you'll be careful. Okay, so they come in these 250 ml bottles, which when the lockdown happened last year, these were like gold dust. And I had to move and use like these um, these pouches and I wasn't too happy with the pouches. But I finally got me some bottles again. So any questions today, just leave them in the comments and I'll have a look as we go along. Um, I've not been very busy. Well, I have been busy. I've been like up to my neck actually <laughs> with work. But um, I've just taken the morning off to be with my nephew's girlfriend. And we went and had a nice dog walk together. She's got a whippet cross, so we um, like to run our dogs together because they love each other. Morning, morning. Oh, <laughs> can't say aloha to all in the chat. Okay. Yeah, so I've just been out with the dog and I didn't get in to work until about one, something like that. It's a bit late. It's like quarter past three now, so I've just come to do a few of these hair conditioners i've got all that you can't see is just my weighing scale so these are my trade scales and um i'm just weighing out my hair conditioners which are 250 mil so i just need to concentrate as i'm doing this but i thought i might as well go live and if you've got anything to ask then we will continue and do it that way because i've not really had time to um make like soap videos because I've made a ton of soap um, and I'm reopening on Monday the website and the shop because we are 
coming out of lockdown now in the UK, thank Lord. So things can hopefully return to some kind of normal way of life. So I thought I'll just turn the camera on because it's easy now. I've got the mic and I've got the webcam. So it's not so much hassle to just set it up and put the video on. But yeah, you'll just have to keep on top of me with the quality and stuff. And if anything's off, then I'll have to address it as we go. It's a little stressful when it doesn't go right. I made a big batch of this hair wrench yesterday and then I just sort of split them off into different fragrances. So I'm just doing Rook and Raven, which is one of my signature scents. And this one is a sandalwood and vanilla and orange and patchouli blend. Doesn't, I'm not getting any comments. Are you there? <laughs> I don't know that it's picking you up. Hold on. Okay, 316, quality looks and sounds great. That's good. That's good. Okay, so America, you're awake by the looks of things then. <laughs> I like to wait until I sort of know. Hang on, I've just got to grab my stuff. Okay. So, I got my big old pot here. <laughs> I'm just weighing out each individual thing. So six, one, four. Now just weigh out individually. So I do a big batch and then I weigh off what I need for each individual set. It just works easier that way sometimes if I've got a lot to do. Or well, sometimes I will do them like individual batches. It just depends how many of each I need. But just for this reopening, I'm not going too crazy. There's quite a lot coming on the shelves, but um, yeah, I don't want to go too mental because I don't like stuff sitting on the shelf. I'd rather make fresh. Okay. Hi, Tiki. This is Candice. Being a hairdresser, I'm really fussy about what goes onto my into my hair, but your conditioner was amazing. I'll be buying more in the future. What's your favourite product to make? My favourite product, thank you, by the way, for buying. Um, my favourite product to make is always soap. Can't help it. It's always, always soap. So I'm just putting my fragrance blend in here. Okay. Yeah, always cold processed soap. I like just, if I could just make soap and just be a soap maker, that's all I would do. I would just make soap. And I do like piping the whip soap, but it's um, the actual process of making the bases. It's, it's really great when you fight, when you get it right. But then when you have to keep making the bases, sometimes I think, God, I put like oh, it's too much work. Um, OK. Do you use a pre? No, I don't make a use a pre-made base for any of my products. I make everything from scratch. This one, this conditioner, I started off when I wanted to do hair conditioners. I did buy a base from a company here um, called The Soap Kitchen, who are a good supplier, but their hair conditioner, it made my hair worse. So I thought, I can't do that. I can't put something rubbish. The bases are all great, but if they don't really work very well, then they ain't so great, you know. So I like to make sure that a product actually works, and this really, really does. But it ain't cheap to make. It's um, one of the emulsifiers in there is a conditioning agent, and it's so expensive. So price is just uh, ridiculous, you know. But it's the way it goes. But I'm still not as expensive as sort of stuff that you would buy then from a hairdresser, you know, like £20 of shampoo and things like that. So these are 10.95 a bottle. And they could really do with being a bit more, but I like to keep things accessible for people. You know, it's not cheap. It's um, handcrafted, handmade shouldn't mean cheap, but it also 
is generally cheaper than high-end brands would charge for product you know so things that you get from the hair salon i mean most products are good but the prices are extortionate good thank you claire i am very good doing very well thank you yep enjoyed having a bit of time to make stuff rather than being flat out packing orders and trying to make stuff at the same time that's why i took a bit of a break so i might change up the way i do my selling just because i like to as you can see behind me i've done the whip soaps and i'm still not happy i wanted that whole shelf to be full of whip soaps then this to be full of hair conditioner this is my body creams i wanted it to the floor and then on these i wanted all of my bath salts like there and my sugar scrubs but it honestly it, i cannot tell you how long it takes to make everything and have to sort of some if i make anything new then it's all got to be uploaded to the portal and all the file i mean i've got to do my files anyway but it's it's you know if i've made stuff before then my product files i just have to update them but if i'm making something new then it's a brand new file so that takes a long time so i try to stick with things that I've made before, that's why I do seasonal, so I can bring stuff back, so I've already done, but, you know, the crappy admin work that has to be done. So, yeah, it's uh, tiresome. But, just keep going. Just keep going. Hello from West Australia. What time is it in Australia? Is it evening, late evening, I would imagine? Just give these a little top up. Okay. So, okay, so these, if you have things that you place in bottles, I just have to take my gloves off to do this so I can't pick them up with gloves on I used to use the um sealed for your protection pads that you put onto container so it would fit on the top of a bottle cap so on there you would put like a sealed for your protection but to get them in the UK was really really difficult and I kept thinking I need to have some sort of form of protection on the top of the bottle so they don't leak in transit so i chose some clear these and if you can see they are circles as you, you can kind of make it out but um i use clear sticky labels so while they're not quite the same you've still got to like take them up and now that you can just pop them on the top of there like that and then i take my lid and where that sticker's on there, you just push down and then it sticks. So it's similar, but it's um, just a little more tricky for the end user to take that off inside. So when they open that cap, it's not going to leak. <laughs> but it is really sticky underneath, but it's it's better than something leaking, you know, because I ship these worldwide. So if you're looking for things like that, then that's a, these are fantastic. So you just get them that cover the uh, bottle cap. I hope you can... Yeah, you can see it there. So I'm just looking at the things you can see. But yeah, this sticker sticks on the top and then it folds over. Good morning from California. Hello, Clarissa. How are you today, Clarissa? So what are you all doing today? I'm only going to be on for a little while. So I'm just going to just thought we'll just do another one because these are easy. And before I make soap again, this it just is a bit tricky for me. I like to film my soap videos which I will have more coming, but at the moment I don't need to make the soaps yet. I need to make all the other products. So that's why I'm doing these lives more, um, really, because it's all I can really show. It's all I can really do at the moment. Cornwallis, where's Cornwallis? Corn, you mean Cornwall? Corn, does that say Cornwallis? Where's Cornwallis? I don't know. Oh, 22, 22, 22. Look at that, Adrienne. 22, 22. Yeah. 
clear stickers. I never I never thought of it before. I kept thinking, what can I use that is cost effective for me yet will do the job? And I don't, I honestly, I cannot tell you how long I searched for those blooming sealed for your protection labels. And I kept thinking, there must be a, a supplier that sells them in the UK because you know, all the medicine bottles come with them. And I just could not for the life of me find anywhere. And you know how these days we want everything to be accessible online. So if you um, need anything for your business, you want to be able to buy it online. I do anyway. I want to go to it and buy it and it be convenient. I don't want to have to email a company, get a quote for numbers and all. It's, it's just like it's such an old school way of doing things. And I know that there, for things like that, there's a lot of companies that still do it that way. But it just is it takes too long. It's like if you've got the product in stock, put it on a website so we can buy it, you know. I was heading to my shop to make, this is Joni. I was heading to my shop to make some soap. I saw you alive and grabbed another cup of coffee. <laughs> and sat back down. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> okay, so they're here. I've got, I'm just doing 10 of these Rook and Raven just to top up. So how many will I have? I've got Dark Carnival, 4 and 20 Blackbirds, Lime Corner, Sparkle Box, Wild Fig. Then this is Rook and Raven. And then I've got a some more to do so i don't know how many i'm going to get out of what i've got left that i make about 15 kilos of the base at a time that will fit into my pan and then i just continuously make 15 kilos until i'm happy with the amount on the shelf but it's a long long job that's the only that's the thing so you can make a bar of, a batch of soap and it's made in an afternoon and cut the next day and then it's left on the shelf you know it, to cure but with these things it's like i have to make the base and then over the next 24 hours i have to let it cool because it just it can't go in the bottles hot otherwise it creates condensation and um i need to add my fragrance when it's cooled and my preservative when it's cooled and all that kind of thing so it's just such a long drawn out process to make these other products like so same thing with body creams and um shampoo bars a, a bit of a pain in the bum so yeah soap is just the easiest thing to film and it'd be like you know something that can go up in one week whereas these things Okay, back again. Sorry, this is just <laughs> rubbish today. I don't know what's going on. I've got a signal on there, but it's, yeah. Okay, how are you? I also have a cup of tea. I am from France. You got this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Thank you. Just um, waiting for my house move to go ahead. That would be nice. At some point, I had a dream last night that um, the next door neighbour of the new house that we're buying had stolen half my garden. Where does it come from in your mind with these things? I woke up and said to Matt, oh, I had this horrible dream that they'd stolen half the garden. And then the lady that was selling us the house said, you knew this was going to happen. I said that was part of the deal. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, I don't know where this stuff comes from. Seriously just waiting um it just it's just so long i feel like it's so long to wait you know and i don't want to wait anymore i'm fed up with it i just want to move 
would love to know more about labels, how to make them and what to put on it. What, what do you mean, what to put on it? I use, I've done sort of bits on my um, soap packaging. So I do explain programs that you can use to create your labels. But what do you mean, what to put on it? So let me know and I will try and answer you. Crystal, Crystal's back. Hello, Crystal. How are you today, Crystal? Hello, Kate. Lisa Lofthouse's daughter. Hi, Kate. Hello, Sarah. Okay, bear with me now. I've just got to make a note of what I've got here. We'll come right over. One. Okay, now, a no jug. A new jug. Hold on a minute. Okay, back again. Hello again from West Yorkshire. Hello. Goody, good, good. Everybody's all right. Everybody's all right. Okay, what am I doing now? I've just got to switch a sec just to have a look at something. Hold on. Okay, sorry, just had to look up something that I need to make next. Need to weigh out what I've got here. I'm just using up some fragments here, so as long as I know how much fragments I've got, I know how much that I can make. So I'm doing blueberry now, which is I don't like it at all, but um, some people do. So five is five, two, one, two, five, zero. Okay. <laughs> Now I know what I can do. I'll have a look at your comments again in a minute. This is going to make so many of my customers happy, but I'm only going to have a few of these. This is blueberry vanilla fragrance. But let me tell you, it is one of the strongest scents. I've ever smelled, let me just get my gloves back on, I've ever smelled in my life. It's so, so strong that it's enough to blow your blooming socks off. Crystal. What are you talking about, dear? We can be friends. We are friends, Crystal. What do you need to talk to me about this week? <laughs> Okay, don't spam the comments. <laughs> yeah, so this blueberry is like super, super strong. In soap, it goes a little bit brown, which is a shame, but it is a good scent if you like strong ones. Uh, need the loo, for goodness sake. I'm not a great lover of blue beaten uh, there, honestly. I wish my customers didn't like this as much as they do. It's just not, it's not to my liking at all. But, you know, each to their own, isn't it? You have to sort of make what they want you to make. And that's that. Lauren, I made nine batches of soap yesterday and watched your videos the whole time. It's crazy to me. I, you know, I never really think about um, people sitting watching the videos when I make them, and you know, afterwards it's just weird. But um, I guess it's just the same as me watching someone else's video, isn't it? You know. Good morning from Vienna, West Virginia. Will you be live streaming soap making too, Tilly? Oh, I don't know. I have thought about it, but the thing is, I fanny about, you know, when I'm making soap, it's like, like I've said in previous videos, when I do my videos, you'll probably get in like 20 minutes of the process when there's probably an hour, you know, well, not an hour, it doesn't take an hour to pour it, but mixing, messing and all that kind of thing.
and gets cut out because a lot of the time it's like it's it, the video would end up being really really long so actually to do a live soap making I mean I could do if people would want to watch that but I'm in and out of the room and I don't know how interesting it would be and then I don't edit the lives I leave them as they are so I don't know no <laughs> I don't I don't know I wouldn't say no I just um it's just a bit tricky you know it's a little bit tricky with it being like it is do you make soap for the love of music are you a soap maker if you are then you might um, know what i mean you know you might know what i mean it's just a little tricky when you're in the throw of doing that i don't know do you ever make candles now i don't make candles i have done um wax melts and i have got some wax actually to do some but um again i find it <sighs> it's not my favorite thing to do but it's when i make candle or I've wax melts and things like that I think because the scent is so strong like generally you would use like a 10 percent concentration of fragrance i find it really um i'm quite sensitive to scent and when i'm using it at 10 percent, it's like it doesn't it just doesn't make me feel um very well you know I'll just aim you down a little bit. You might be able to see a bit more. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Just while I'm doing these, you might see a little bit more there. There, I'll pull it back a bit for you. So, I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just pouring these onto my scale and weighing them out. So, each one is 250 millilitres. Hold on, I'll have another look in a moment. Just while I'm concentrating, looking at my weight, I can't look at you on the screen. Okay. Okay. I just did Dahlia. I don't know what program to use. Do I, I include expiration? Okay, Lorianne, are you in the UK or are you in... Um, another country uh, I would love a live soap making I might do a live one sometime if I can get myself organized enough to put the camera on and do a live I will hi Iris how long can you store your conditioners my conditioners have a shelf life of one year and then they must be used so about a year this is high water content in a conditioner so yeah that's why they uh don't have too long a shelf life ideally in when it's been opened you have about six months to use it before it might change its makeup a little bit it won't go moldy there's a lot of preservative in these because of the water content you have to but um yeah six months open and uh a year unopened and then use them my customers generally buy a few at a time. Some people go ham on these things. It's like as soon as I put them up, they, they're gone. But they are really very good. If I do say so myself, it's a really good hair conditioner. I won't use anything else on mine now. Okay. Uh, do you make shampoo bars? Yes, I do, Joanne. My recipes are all in my links. In each video I make, you can find my shampoo bar recipe and my soap recipes. I don't have any more at the moment. I have worked on a whipped soap PDF, but um, I haven't put it up yet because I'm not quite happy with the, uh, the article I've done yet. So I need to just make sure that's right. Is there a video I can observe on label making? I haven't done a video on label making. Um, who's that guy? Dean Wilson. He's done a really good video. Um, on Hold on. He's done a new, a vi not a new video. He's done a video on soap packaging, so how you create the label. He's done them. I've watched it years ago, so that's worth checking out. Yeah, Dean Wilson, I think his name is. Um, what's your best fresh fragrance for soap my best fresh fragrance for soap um i like essential oils for the um 
So I just have to lean in. So fresh scents. I really, really like the one that I make called Lagoon. It is a very, like I call it a breath of fresh air when I use it. I absolutely love it. And it's lavender with geranium and patchouli. But it's kind of, there's something about it that sort of smells, this is going to sound odd, but it smells cold. If that makes sense. It smells very airy and light and fresh and clean. And I really love it. It's actually a really good one. But fragrances, fresh fragrances, off the top of my head, I can't think because I use, I've used so many, but fresh, um, hang on, I'll have a look at the shelf in a minute. I will see. Fresh fragrances. Hmm. Like the beachy ones, I guess, any beachy ones that are fresh. I like the green tea lemon I use. It's very fresh and clean. So, yeah, things like that. Um, what made you switch from exclusively using essential oils to adding fragrance oils to your soaps? I, have, can't, I didn't have to, but my customer requests are what made me change. You know, you can't. With essential oils, you're limited as to what you can create. And my customers are scent crazy, the same as I am. So to create everything that I wanted to was impossible, or what they were asking me for was impossible with just essential oils. So I switched and I use both now. And I have done for years, and it made my business grow very, very quickly by offering a lot more than I was before. So that's why. Customer, customer customers <laughs> what they wanted and so I listened and gave them what they wanted basically just making a mess making a mess so yeah that's that greetings from Austria do you have somebody who helps you or are you doing it all yourself I do it all myself please use a fragrance oil that for the love of music, do you make soap yourself? Please use a fragrance oil that accelerates when you do a live soap. Love your panic mode and the rescued soap you always manage to get at the end. Thank you for being you and showing your lovely ability. Thank you, Megan. I love fresh... Hold on a minute. I love fresh florals. Okay. I do. Okay, so you know, then doing a live video, you want me to entertain you, don't you? That's what you're saying. <laughs> you want me to entertain you so you can laugh at me having a nightmare on the screen. <laughs> That's what you want me to do. A little sneak. <laughs> so, no, I don't want to do that, really. <laughs> That's not ideal. <laughs> Okay, we just sit and put these little labels on the in a moment. Okay, sit down now just to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I will use a very nice, slow moving. Do you know what I'd really like to do? You know, the um, Taiwan swirl. I never cut my soaps so that I can do the Taiwan swirl and cut it in that way because I just, I, you know, the moulds that I use and whatnot, I always think I can't do that. I just, it would mean making like a small batch, but I really love the Taiwan swirl and I love watching people make it. So I'd love to do that with a slow moving fragrance. But my recipe that I use all the time would have to, I don't know, I'd probably have to tweak it and maybe use a different one because it's it stays fluid, but not maybe for that long. What's the worst fragrance you've ordered? Have I got fuzzy? Have I gone fuzzy? I can't see here. To be honest, it shows just how you can rescue a situation. Yeah, but you know, when you've seen me rescue on before, they're still edited. <laughs> I've taken the swearing out. Am I fuzzy to you all? Has it gone weird? Let me know. What's the worst fragrance you've ordered, says Pop of Suds. The worst fragrance I've ordered. 
I think, oh yeah, I know what it was. One called, well, it's not probably, it's one of the worst, because I mean, there's probably been hundreds over the years. I've had so, you know, had so many, but I think one of the worst I've ever ordered is one called Sweet Peanuts, and it smelt like socks. It was rank, and I thought, if you think that smells like Sweet Peanuts, you're off your rock. It absolutely was gross. No fuzzes here, all clear, how good. You handle the difficult so perfectly. Yes, but again, it is edited. It's like, I think you have to, if, well, you know, if you make soap, how quick you have to move if it, if it starts to move really fast. And it's not all, like, what you don't ever see me do is the ones that I try to rescue that I've, that's gone wrong, you know, so, and they don't get filmed. So there's only like, um, a few uh, that I filmed and they haven't gone absolutely crazy like some of them you know you can get soap on a stick some of them they haven't done that so it's yeah some of them you ain't seen when they have gone absolutely crazy I've had also others you know when you get I guess they don't saponify and you get the fragrance that sits um editing is my pal yes for times like that you get the fragrances where they come and rise to the surface and then sit on the top of the soap i've had a, f a few of those in my time not many but that, that's really horrible or you get them where they make pockets inside the soap and they sort of um seep that's a horrible situation don't like that and let me just see if i've missed any of you you have on my screen. You have, have Joanne. I, am I still fuzzy? It's not fuzzy to anyone else, so I don't know why. I haven't changed anything, so editing is your part. I had a clean linen one that smelled like chemicals through the whole batch out, never doing that again. It depends, I guess, where you get them from as well. I do have tried and trusted suppliers now that, you know, there's some that are just a definite no-no for fragrance. I had soap on a stick the other day. Yeah, horrible. I love anything with oud in it too. Yeah, I'm part of a perfumery group, and somebody said the other day, "When's this whole oud thing going to be over?" And I said, "Probably as long as it takes for the uh, watery aquatic sense to be over too." Because remember, in the '90s, everything was like aquatic and water and all that cool water business and Calvin Klein escape and all that. And they were like in perfumery. I do make perfumes, but in perfumery, oud is such a massive thing at the moment, and it's made its way into other products. But as perfumers, people, I think they're getting a bit peed off with it because it's like everybody wants oud or tobacco, oud, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't make any oud ones myself. Um, I understand as I, are your recipes some batches? I don't know what you mean looks like they're sweating yeah it's horrible isn't it they're sweating and horrible well i don't get like sweating it's like when they weep it's like it's they sort of um yeah they see what gets boring elaborate <laughs> i'm losing myself here as i'm going along aren't i keep trying to keep up with comments and try and engage brain with what i'm doing here Blueberry six rook ten. Okay, next. What am I doing next? Okay. Oh, same sense. Yeah, same sense. Did you get boring? Crystal. I've had enough of it. Sorry. I think Crystal is just literally a spammer, and I'm I've had enough of it. I don't get it. Like, why do people do that? She's not asking anything. There's nothing specific. She's telling me she loves me. We want to be best friends. I love it. I'm, I'm just had enough of that. I just had a batch of soap that had fragrance on top. Yeah, it's horrible. I don't think it's a water discount. I think sometimes it could be where the fragrance or has been emulsified, maybe. Or you might get false trace and that might happen. There we go. I had to try the gingerbread with coffee grounds. Don't think I can give it away. Yeah, some of the coffee ones are like, they don't smell like coffee at all, do they? You, you sort of put them in soap, and especially when you use coffee in soap, the horrible smell you get, like 
you know when you use like cocoa powder in soap butter it's it it's a really horrible horrible scent it, I, I really don't like it at all but yeah coffee soaps it's like I think the best way to deal with it is if you put some chocolate fragrance in with the coffee fragrance. That's what I've done. And it actually then smells like really, really good. I think I showed that soap I made the other week. It isn't coffee, but I did dark chocolate and oatmeal stout. And oh, it's good. So if you mix something with your coffee scent, maybe that would work. For candles to a good, good coffee scent, use it in wax melts, yeah. Hello from California. I'm so excited for your shop to open back up. Me too, in a way, but I know next week I'm going to be hell of a busy. Right, let me just get my next fragrance. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Hold on, guys. I'm just getting a spoon. Okay, coming back. Sorry, I just have to keep. I have to wash up in between doing all this stuff. Espresso from Brambleberry is the best I've found so far. That would be nice to try if I can ever order from them again. It's so expensive with the shipping, so it sort of makes my product, I lose too much profit because of cost. Um, hello from Walden, Colorado. I bought your soap recipe and I love it. I just tried the recipe in hot press and it behaved beautifully and saponified after 10 minutes. Well, that's great. I've never seen in your videos that you've got soda ash. No, it's not a problem. If you follow my soap water, uh, my water discount, sorry, I'm just fiddling about myself. Water discount will eliminate soda ash. So try in that one. You could try like a 25% and then up it to 35%. And I mean taking that amount out of the soap. So I do like a 40% water discount now. So whatever the water calls for, I take 40% out. And that stops it. Uh, Brenda from Pink, Oklahoma. I appreciate your advice on water reduction. It made a big difference in my set. There you go. Water reduction. You're welcome, Lorianne. Megan, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm running to an appointment. You appreciated and awesome. Thank you very much. I find it hard to take um, praise. That's one of the issues. I, I have. I, um, I had a reading, a psychic reading, a while ago, and the lady said you find it very difficult to um, let people, like people, sort of give you any praise. I was like, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I do water discount spray with alcohol. See, so really, I never ever get it. It, it could matter. I, it, it could make a difference how much. Um, like if your water is a hard water area or a soft water area, that all comes into play as well. Maybe try a larger water discount and then it should go away. I did find, if you watch the water discount video I've got on this channel, I was really shocked when I first did it. I did a 50% discount, so I took 50. I just chopped the water in half, like the required water weight in half. And I was amazed how slow it took to trace. It's, it's really, um, really good. How long do you think it would take to empty your shelves of the whipped? This lot here, um, maybe a couple of weeks. They'll go really quickly, and then they'll, there'll be one of them. This is usually what happens. There'll be one of them that sells out really, really quickly, like everybody will go for the same one. And there's a couple of new ones. I've got a golden kiwi, a plumeria. Which I'm just going to do in the hair rinse. Um... Ghost of Whitley Court is like a palm of violet. And then there's a couple that I bought back from previous times, but they they go mental for those. Absolutely crazy. Okay, I do distilled water comes in weeks. It comes in weeks. Made you move away from EOs to FOs. You have to go back through this video because I've just answered that one. Uh, yeah, so yeah, a couple of weeks.
Okay. <laughs> so the ash came back after a, back after a few weeks. Is that happened to you? No. I know. I'm sorry. It just keeps blooming going out, doesn't it? Right. I'm going to just pour this again. So I'm doing plumeria now. So I want to do. Yeah, I know what I'm doing, kind of. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, she says. Sounds like diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea, diarrhea. What's that film? Parenthood. <laughs> With Steve Martin. Remember that 80s film? Was it 80s or 90s? Diarrhea. Okay. 1500 plumeria i'm doing my hair conditioner in plumeria because i think that it will be well liked it's such a nice scent this is brambleberry it's so good so yeah big bottle Oh my God, Palma Violets. I know, another one I'm not keen on, but they love it. It's here, and I call mine, hopefully you can see this, The Ghost of Whitley Court. And Whitley Court is a old country manor that burned down in the 1930s, but it's still there, and you can go and visit. And when I went there, it was kind of spooky and kind of weird, and I was... Coming up with a release, I can sit down again for this. I was coming up with a release for the autumn, and I went to Whitby Court to um, get some inspiration, and that's what I came back with. Was I could kind of sense this? I don't know. It was like it just felt real ghostly, and I thought, it smells like violet, smells like lavender, and I came up with this thing and this scent and this lady and this story in my mind. It's another thing I like to do. So when I sell my product, I like to create like a background or, you know, I like to do that a lot, not all the time, but when I'm creating scents or making things up or making blends myself, I like to have a backstory to, to sort of get people to visualize, you know. That's it. When you're sliding in the first and you're feeling something burst, diarrhea, diarrhea. That's it. It's that one. When you're sitting in your Chevy and your shorts are feeling heavy, diarrhea, diarrhea. Your videos have saved me so much money. Have they now? How on earth have I saved you money? Let me see. I used to. Oh, there you go. I told you, told you about using those things, Lauren, didn't I? I See, now, people ask me all the time, how much can I use of this and this, and how much essential oil do you use? My um, <laughs> my um, assessment, I'll show you what I've got. Hold up, I've got a list here somewhere. Here's my list. I keep this to hand because I need to use it and refer to it. So I'll give you a quick flask on this sheet. Oh, uh, there. I don't know if you can read this very much, but this is the list of essential oils from my CPSR that I'm allowed to use. These are extras. I've had amendments done to this, and they allowed me to use milk powders, goat milk, coconut milk. God, I forgot about all this. So hover beads. I don't know. I could use them. <laughs> I had this updated years ago, my soap assessment, and I put, I put it all together. So on the front here, anyway, let's get back to what I was talking about. On the front here, I've got all of my essential oils and usage rates that I'm allowed to use. And my assessor, which in my soap assessment is Scott Granger from Cosmetic Safety Assessments, he has set my limits. So most of them are 1.9%. And you will find like when you look at soap recipes, especially from the States, they will say 5% usage rate. And I always used to think that's way too high. Years ago, an average, uh, you know, other than the ones you have to use a lower amount of, but an average years ago was 3% that you would put in soap of essential oils. I think it still is, actually. I think it's like a going rate. But when I had my assessments done, because I had a flexi, 
I think they had to be a bit more cautious with me at the time. But on here, most of them are 1.9. So generally, like your limes, oranges, lemon, and all that kind of thing, coriander, I've got eucalyptus, frankincense, they're all 1.9. And then the low ones, basil, um, has to be low methyl eugenol only. And I'm only allowed 0.25% of that one. And then cinnamon leaf, which I never use, I'm allowed 1%. What, labdanum, 1%, laurel leaf, 0.5. So these are the ones that would have like a heavy eugenol or um, coumarin content, which is like a, a high allergen, you know. Myrtle, I'm allowed 0.05. So a lot of them are really low. And rose, if I wanted to use rose absolutely in soup, well, I would be absolutely in soup. Soap, I would be absolutely mental if I used rose oil in soap, but, you know. I'm allowed to use 0.5%, so literally no point. And again, with violet leaf, absolute, I'm allowed to use that 0.5%. But most of them, I'm allowed to use 1.9%. When I got this back, I mean, we're going back years. When I got this back, it was like, it's kind of low. But then when you actually do use 1.9%, it's like, it's plenty. And I think even 3% is like, you know, it's pretty ridiculous, really, when you can get away with 1.9 or say 2, you know. I don't use 2. I use what I'm supposed to use. But you could go down to 2 and you'd be fine. And you wouldn't um, lose really any scent. It's just, I used to get Christmas scent. I like my scent really strong. And I used to think, well, you can't have them really strong for me because I'm only allowed this. And trying to explain that to an American who didn't understand the British rules of, you know, cosmetics was really difficult for me in the beginning but now it's not even an issue they all just smell you know have you ever created your own essential oil no i wish i could i'll tell you who is it who's got a distiller um bonnie ball from what's her blooming good earth spa she she does her own I currently make candles and I'm trying soap. Can you recommend a basic recipe to start with? Yes, mine. <laughs> if you oh, I'll just move this blooming email. If you um, look in the description box of all my videos, you will find my recipe is listed on Etsy, and I do a basic recipe, which is the one I always use, and there's also palm oil free. Julie, I kind of agree. Those absolute smells like urine in soap, in my opinion. I've never used it, so I just, you know, I couldn't actually afford to um, use that in soap. There's just no way. Right, I'm going to, I can sit again, I guess, to pull these in. No, I didn't sit down in the first place. I get so used to standing up when I'm at work, but it's, it's just what I do. You know, you're off. Okay. What do you think about this scale? It didn't like to tear off for some reason. I have to turn the bloody thing off and on again. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So there's something I'm not doing right. These are new scales, well, a few weeks ago. So right. I'm off again. I have got a cream dispenser out the back, but because I'm only doing small numbers, I'm not using it. I'm just having to pour these and luckily, I give it a good old stick blend of the base so that it's fluid, but it will thicken back up again. But yeah, I've got a bottle, just like a cream dispenser out the back that I use for creams and things like that. But yeah, you won't get to see that today. One day I might show that when I'm doing another one, another live. But I have to make sure that I'm using it for larger batches because it has to be cleaned in between. So, you know, if I'm not doing like 30 jars or 50 jars or something, then it's it's easier to just do these few. Okay, you often find this with FOEO in diffusers, often find stronger oils do not give a better throw because it clogs the sticks. Lower concentration often better in lots of stuff for a variety of reasons. There you go, everyone. For the love of music is filling you in with some more information. I don't do reads and things like that, but I can kind of see what you mean. It's just overkill is it's unnecessary you know you don't need to use huge amounts of fragrance to get the effect i think almost sometimes people use so much that it almost flies off and you, you can't smell it at all which is kind of strange if you get what i mean it goes so crazy that i, I guess your senses may be overloaded and then that you can't it's, it's 
it's silly. Sitting is easier. I'm in a wheelchair, so sit all the time. <laughs> yeah, normally I like to stand when I'm doing things. I don't mind, like, obviously sitting when I'm wrapping things up, like soap wrapping and things like that. But generally, I am on my feet for most of the day. 48, 49. Come on, 50. There we go. Unexpensive for no benefit. True. True, true, true. That's what I said in one of my videos. I said, you don't need to use this which is what that lady earlier was mentioning. It's like you can save yourself some money by not using as much blooming fragrance. It's only the suppliers telling you to use those amounts because when you use those amounts, you've got to keep buying more and more. So, yeah, just keep your levels lower and um, it's all good, isn't it? Nearly time to go in a second. We've been on for almost an hour. Oh, Crystal's gone again, because I think Crystal's a bit of a mentalist. I wonder why, explain to me somebody, I wonder why people would come along like that and spam a comment section. Do you think they're just having fun, or why on earth would anybody do that? I don't get it. I don't get what they're trying to achieve, really. Saying, I love you, can we be friends? It, what? Why would they do that? You know, you get it on Facebook things, and um, they sort of come along, and you get like spammers and the things that they put. I don't know what is the point. And someone fill me in because I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't get what they're trying to do, or if it, I just don't understand. I'm completely baffled by the behaviour of it. You know. Hold on a sec, guys. I'm just weighing again. I need a gram. One gram. There we go. Okay, that's some of those made. Bit of tissue. Get a bit of tissue put on the floor. Okay. Is there a good fragrance that goes with musk FO? I don't know. You'd have to uh Sniff through your bottles and have a think about what you think might go with it. I don't use musk. I don't really um, like musky scents. So I have no idea. You'd have to sort of put things together and maybe blot them on some tissue or on cotton wool buds or cotton wool pads and sort of have a sniff and see what you think smells good. Have you found anything difficult to get hold of during the pandemic? Was hellish for wax? Oh, I know about the wax because I'm in a few groups and people are going crazy. And I got a bag of soy out the back that people just couldn't get hold of. And I was thinking, well, I'm not, I'm not going to use that really, but I am going to use it. I want it. I like to keep hold of stuff because, you know, but at the time I thought it wouldn't have been enough for them anyway because I'd only got a five kilo bag. It's like if I do a few wax mounts, I'd only buy in sort of like 10 kilos at a time. But anything to difficult to get only packaging like these bottles that was the only thing everything else no problem at all I just need to put my lids again hold on hold on excuse my rump in the picture I put things down and now I can't blend them here they are sorry Oh, go away, email, email, email. Yeah, nothing I couldn't. Yeah, nothing I couldn't find. It was not too bad at all. Could be a bot. So rainy day forest. Yes, you could be a bot. So what does a bot do? What would be the point of commenting on these sort of things or on Facebook things? Are they gathering information? Is that what it is? I don't really understand it. I'm a bit, you know. I bought your recipe, Tiggy. Do you put EO, same percentage like FO? Yes, like I said on my list, I'm allowed 1.9%, so I stick to what I'm allowed. So wherever you are and whatever your allowance is, if you are in the UK and you have assessments, then stick to what they say. If not, then go to the guidelines on a certain supplier's website. So if you're using fragrance or essentials, they should give you that information. And if they don't have the if statement ask for it 
and they if a statement will give you the amount that you can use although it will usually be way higher than you need maybe they're bored or not enough room in the top paddock <laughs> and why do you use a high percentage of fo i don't use a high percentage of fo that was exposed to say not enough you mean supposed to say not enough rooms in the top paddock okay i think i've just answered you all there got a few more I only got a little bit left and it's almost time to go home to my little doggy who's at home alone at the moment and it's a pain in the because next door uh, having some work done that's really not nice for her. People like to comment on live videos. They don't occur very often, so people get excited. Yeah, but sh other pe they, people do it on, like, Facebook, even when they're not live, though. Like, they're not on live, they're just comments, and it's just a slew of comments. So if it's a bot, I don't really know what the point is of doing it. Looking for approval. What do you mean, though? I love you. I want you to be my friend. And what... That I don't think she was. I think it's like it's the constant spam. Like her comments, they come up and it's like she's not really asking anything or saying anything. It's like, how are you today? I love you. How are you? I won't be friends. It's like I don't – it's not saying anything, is it? It's just sort of like it's not normal. So what it makes me think it's like spam, but what's the purpose of the spam? That's what, that's what I'm saying. Somebody's got to have an answer to that. It must happen to a lot of people, I'm guessing. Don't know. Okay. Rumbleberry say 1%, but it's not enough. It depends, though, Dahlia. If they say 1% for a certain fragrance, then it's all that you are allowed of that certain fragrance. Are you meaning in soap? Are you meaning in other products? Like in, the, in this, I would never use more than 1% in a hair conditioner. I'd never use more than 1% in a body cream. That's the allowance I'm allowed in body cream, but in soap it's higher because it's a different makeup. So anything that's a wash off product, you can use more and anything that's a leave on product, you would use less. So I'm never allowed to go over 1% in body creams and hair conditioners and things like that. Even though a hair conditioner is a wash off, it's touching the scalp. So it, you'd only need a small amount in soap so if it's in soap it means that that particular fragrance if they're stating one percent then it's if you put it any higher people will get an allergic skin reaction that's generally why so you'll find that not all of brambleberry's fragrances will say one percent it will only be the ones that they're only allowed to state one percent because of certain allergens so yeah you need to keep an eye on that don't like put any more because it could harm someone's skin just a program set to run, probably possibly to be disruptive or use bandwidth. Also, possibly seeking you to reach out and exploit for info. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. If Brambleberry say one percent, should I follow her or your one point nine? You would follow her. It's like if I had a fragrance, like my general fragrance is allow. I'm allowed one point nine percent. But if a fragrance stated only use one percent then you can only use one percent because of certain allergens so yeah just take note of what they're saying because it's important that you don't burn someone's skin because certain fragrances have certain allergens that cause all kinds of certain issues for people's skin so stick to what it says so if it says more than one percent on any fragrance then you could go to like you know your general rule of thumb but if it says that then it says one percent for a reason there's some of like nature's garden if you click on some of them then you will see that they say not body safe and so you can't use them at all because the allergens are so high so it's generally things like eugenol and coumarin they're very very high so things like clove oil that contain those allergens that's so high that if you even put a tiny bit on your skin it will immediately start to burn so that's why I hope that's answered now. Do you do, did you do a training course for perfumery? I did. I did do one for perfumery with a company called Plush Folly here in the UK. And they taught me the basics, but I, do, I was already making them anyway, but I wanted to do something and get a certificate at the end. So I did do that one. But um, 
they can teach you quite a lot about aroma chemicals and things like that it's like um yeah there's a lot a lot to take in making perfumes it's just honestly you think it's crazy for soap but in perfumery I mean, like some of these perfume groups and some of the ingredients, like you'll find lists of perfumes. Some people put up samples that you can try and remake. So something like a Chanel perfume, they'll put like a sample up for you so you can recreate a certain one. And there are literally hundreds of different components, hundreds. It's crazy. So to be a nose of a perfumer, which I'm not, I'm not there yet, but to actually be be able to do that i think is just honestly i'd love to I'd get to that point but it's time and that's it's kind of something that you would focus on that solely and nothing else okay okay daily are good that's good so yeah just be careful it's always it'll always be like something to do with the skin allergen i use everything you mentioned i'm your receipt i don't get my soap to be as creamy and smooth like yours why is that I use everything you mention. I'm your receipt. What do you mean? Do you have my recipe? Have you bought my recipe? And if so, I don't know why. I'm sure you know more than us here in the United States. We don't have the restrictions you got in the UK. No, you don't. It's a it's a pain though. Recipe she means. Mm. Hold on. Just need to do a few more of these. I'll come back, see what you're saying. Creamy and smooth like yours. Some, there's some, you did buy it. So it's the basic one you're using, is that right? Just the original recipe, the palm one that's got palm oil in it. <laughs> Sometimes, I just got to stand up and pour this off next time. Sometimes, 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 um, it depends on what fragrance you use or essential oil as well. Definitely makes a difference to the way that something performs in my soap better. Sometimes it's not quite the same. Hang on, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, keep that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Diarrhea, diarrhea. Diarrhea, diarrhea. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. More. Okay. I bought your recipe, but it's not that creamy like yours. I watch all your videos. Is it because of the palm oil? No, if you're using the recipe as it is, it wouldn't be that. But have you tried my soap? Because it might just look a certain way and it might look creamier on camera because of the water discount. It makes um, the batter look different. So it could be that as well. It could be that. I don't know. But yeah, it won't be like the, you know, the base won't make any difference, but a water discount could and a fragrance or an essential oil also can make a difference to the creaminess. I find like my white witch soap, which is just a basic geranium and patchouli, is the creamiest soap that I make. And it's the same recipe, the same base, everything. But it's always, it just is like some, I don't know, it's like magic. Is it the temperature? I can't, I really don't know. I don't know. Are you doing a water discount or are you leaving it as the, the high amount? Are you using it the default amount? Answer me that, and then I, I might, I could say that it would be the water discount that would make it look more creamy. Have you bought any of my actual bars of soap? Can you recommend a good UK supplier for soaping ingredients with regard to quality and competitive costs? Yes, the soapery are very, 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 very good. They're relatively new, not now, but... Um, I soap at room temperature, Dahlia. So you're doing a 33% water discount? No. I didn't buy soap from you. Okay, so it might just look like it's more creamy. 
So without you actually having the bar in your hands, it's kind of difficult to say whether mine is more creamy than yours, isn't it? It just might look a certain way, but I would definitely say the discount something to do with it. I don't know for sure. Can you recommend trade scales? Yes, these Baxtran. Let me. Baxtran. These ones. These are Baxtran ABD trade scales. I saw another YouTuber making a Lepo soap. Have you made it? No. Sounds as though the aroma is the greatest. Carbolic. Mm -hmm. But apparently felt superb. Might give it a go. Yeah, no, I've never done a Lepo soap. I had a customer come in once, ask me if I made it, and of course I don't, because I've got, only got my two recipes, and I ain't going down that road. I've got enough on my plate. <laughs> oh, aroma isn't a great. I quite like the um, scent of carbolic. Weird, I know, but I do like those old-fashioned smells. I buy Wright's coal tar soap, and I love that. And I also love the scent of what, well, I used to love the scent of pear soap. It used to be a lot stronger than it is now. But pear soap I use only for my eyebrows now to keep my eyebrow hairs in place. <laughs> I do soap brows. <laughs> That's where I've got most of one bit. Well, there you go then. You know, it's only three. They're pretty much the best, I think. Let's get a few more of these done. Yeah, soapery. Um, I don't really use anyone else for ingredients. I do use Bay House Trading, or I think the Bay House ingredients, they're all right. Quite quick at getting orders out. Um, although they have had some backlash on Facebook, but I've always had all right stuff on there. Um, and I used to use the soap kitchen, but they're too expensive now. I don't use them anymore, really. Um, hair brows. Hello, hobby at uh, Holly Hobbyist. I am making hair conditioner. Pear soaps, pear soap brows. Yeah, Matt comes in the bedroom in the morning. I've got like a spare room and I'm my little boudoir where I put my makeup on. He's like, What you got that bar of soap for? I said, For my brows. He's like, Hmm? Huh? For making soap, make, doing soap brows. What do you mean? So, so it holds the hairs in place. Why do you want to do that? Because I'm a girl. That's why. He doesn't. He doesn't usually question me at all. He just probably looks and thinks, the hell she doing? Okay. I have made a lepo soap. It smells kind of smoky. Oh, I wanted, I'd like some. I'd like to buy some. The shipping cost a lot from UK to United States for your soap? Not really. It, everything goes by weight, so you just have to have a look at the website when it's back online and have a look. But yeah, it's not too bad. Obviously, the more you order, the better it goes because then um, it makes it worthwhile. But for a bar of soap, probably not worth it if you're going to buy one bar. Some people do, but I, when they do, I think, are you mad? But they do. I think sometimes people just want to try it, you know, they watch you on YouTube, it sort of, it creates a, a need and a want in people sometimes, which is strange, but there you go. You rub it on dry. What, the Aleppo soap? Hi, I bought your shampoo recipe, can I ask which pan handle you use? Pan handle? Liquid or powder? What? That's not what you meant, is it? You mean... Panthenol, I think that's what you must mean. I use powder, but I mix it into a liquid. I mix it up at like a 75% and then use it that way. Yes. Panthenol, yeah. Okay, I'll give you an answer there. Yeah, powder is cheaper to use because you can, if you buy the liquid, it's only something you can do yourself. So you just use some distilled water or some boiled water even, it's fine because you're going to heat that shampoo bar up anyway so you can use boiled water and make up a 75 percent solution that's what i generally do or i buy sometimes i buy the liquid but there's no point when you can make it yourself you're welcome for ease then you could just buy the liquid but yeah again it's, it's expensive panthenol isn't it well i think it is i think it is 
It was very good soap, cleansing without being dry, and it had a really good love, which surprised me with any olive oil and laurel berry oil. No, the pear soap on your brows. No wonder he was questioning if you'd lost your marbles. There's no question about me losing my marbles. For sure. Okay, we are one hour 20, and I need to finish and go home, dears. You know, we could sit here all afternoon. But it is afternoon, it's half past four. My dog will be like running her din dins and wanting another little tootle around the block. Have a little walkie poos. It's been so cold. If you're in the UK, did you have the snow yesterday? Oh, what was going on? We went out over the bank holiday weekend, and Matt went skateboarding. So I went along with him and one of our friends, and um, we were in t shirts. It was 22 degrees, and then the next day, it was four degrees and it was freezing, freezing cold. It was crazy. Absolutely mental. And it's very cold today, but not as cold as it has been. Definitely not. It's been horrid. Horrid. Snow in Leeds, yes. Gross. Gross. It's gross. Okay. One last question. What's the best way to get a soap to hold its scent? I use the amount of fragrance or recommended by the supplier, but once the soap is cured and when using it, there is no scent. It depends, Sean, on the scent. Some will disappear. Some won't. So you could use clay. That will anchor scent a little bit better. But generally, if something's going to dissipate, then it will, and some fragrances won't. So it just depends sometimes on the fragrance or the essential oil. Oh, God, here we go. Blizzards, yeah, we had that too yesterday. Enjoy your evening, give Brody a good snuggle, I will. I kiss her all the time. Okay, right, I'm going. I'm going to just get these labelled up and I'm going to put them on the shelf and I'm going. So I'll be back soon to, I'll either do another live next week sometime. I might be packing orders, so I, yes, well, I will be packing orders. So I might do a live next week while I'm doing that. And then after that, I'm going to be starting to make some more bar soap again because I have like I'm, a, I'm just having withdrawals I need to make some soap so I will film some of those and do like a proper nice produced video for you so um I'll do that and uh yeah take care thank you nice and thank you very much for joining and if you haven't subscribed to my channel you can do so below and if you want to soap along with me all my recipes are below and all that nonsense so I'll see you soon ta-ta